Oh, here we go then, folks. It's FM24 launch day, and you know what that means. Non-League to Legend is back. Not sure what non-lead to legend is, worry not. I put out a video yesterday explaining all the rules and details of the save. So I'll link to that down below if you need to find out more. But the most important thing for you to know is we're starting this season's journey with Tamworth, newly promoted to the National League North. More on them in a second, but first, I'm giving away two copies of FM24. The first will go to somebody who retweets or reposts or whatever it's called now, the tweet announcing that this video exists. I'll link to the tweet down in the description below so you know you're link retweeting the right one. Just retweet that. Sorted. Copy number two goes out to somebody who leaves a comment on this video. It doesn't matter what the comment is. You can just say, yes, please, Kev. I'd like to win a copy of FM24, please, Kev, if you want to. Whatever you want. Then in a day or two's time, I'll pick somebody who's retweeted, somebody down from the comments on this video, and I'll send both of the winners a copy of the game. And then also, if you want to watch episode two of this series tonight, like this video. If we can get to 5,000 likes on the video before 9 p.m. UK time today, episode two will drop at 9 p.m. Ish. It might end up being a little bit earlier if we hit the target earlier and I finish the video in time. But at the very latest, you'll have episode two, nine o'clock tonight, as long as we hit 5,000 likes on this video by then. And of course, if you're new, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. There's so much FM24 content coming your way at the moment. You won't want to miss any of it. But that's enough housekeeping for now. Let's roll the new intro and get started with Tamworth. And here we go then, folks. Breaking news. Tamworth hire Chapman. Tamworth have today confirmed the appointment of Kevin Chapman, that's me, as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the inexperienced 40. Oh, this is the first time I've been in my 40s at the start of non to Legend. And he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at the Lamb Ground, which, by the way... What a name for a stadium. He replaces previous manager Andy Peaks. So <laughs> media prediction is 18th. Well, hi, Bob. How are we doing? This is Bob Andrews. Um, he's welcoming, welcoming me along. We've got a club reputation of one star. We were founded in 1934. No director of football. I mean, we're in tier six. What would we need a director of football for? I'm probably going to hire one. Um, my assistant manager is called Neil. Our fierce rivals are Nuneaton, who I did a series with many years ago and had quite a nice relationship with. So that might be awkward. Um, but they uh, they got promoted last year, so they are newly promoted to the National League North, having won the Southern Premier Central title last year. We enter the FA Cup at the second qualifying round, the FA Trophy at the second round, and our ground has a 4,500 capacity, which was built a year after. I don't, where did we play for the first year? There's a question. And our facilities are bobbins. So we're back in Tier 6 for the first time in a long time. Um, it's like... Seven, eight years, I think, since Tamworth have been at this level of football. I did do a little bit of reading. I've deliberately not looked at how they were in Football Manager, though. So I'm going into this blind. According to my, my main man, Bob, this is our best 11 set up into Bob's preferred 4 2 3 1. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that I recognise any names there. There's not anybody who particularly stands out just based on their but just based on their smile. Oh, does anyone got a nice smile? I mean, this guy, he look, he looks cheerful, doesn't he? Jordan Colour Name Liebird. I feel like that's the guy I want to have show me around. He's got a lovely smile. What a nice man. Um, and then the board are ah, looking the board culture is to strive to make progress on and off the pitch. So we need to work within our wage budget and grow the club's reputation. That's fairly standard stuff. They're looking for us to finish in the top half of the Van Aramanov, which, I mean, that's easier said than done. I know Tamworth are doing very well in real life, but in game, it just told me the media prediction was 18th and the board are looking for a top half finish. So I hope real life is more accurate to how good this squad is to the media prediction. Um, and they want us to be competitive in the two cups. I've got a one-year contract. I haven't actually seen 
how much money I'm going to be earning yet. Have I skipped past that? Did I, did I miss the most important thing? I need to know about the money. Um, the club vision is to develop players using the club's youth system, which is going to be a challenge because the youth setup, as previously mentioned, all the facilities are not very good. And if we have the opportunity to play against rivals Nuneaton, we have to get the better of them, which I guess is fair enough. Um, yes, we'll do all this stuff. I think monthly is plenty often enough to meet with my backroom staff. And the first thing I want to check is that salary, because I don't remember seeing any details of my salary anywhere. Okay. Two, £240 part-time. We'll, we'll, um, we'll find a way to work with that. So there we have Tamworth Football Club on a map, and there we have roughly, I don't live right in the centre of Leicester, I live in the general Leicester area, um, but that gives you a rough idea of where we are, Leicester to Tamworth. It's about an hour's drive, which might not sound too disastrous, but A, I hate driving. I'm not driving an hour there and an hour back every day. That sounds rubbish. And B, there's absolutely no way I can afford that petrol on the salary that they're giving me. Coming by train, even more of a nightmare because apparently the most direct route from Leicester to Tamworth is to go all the way up to Derby and then I guess get the train from Derby heading towards Birmingham and then jump off as you go through Tamworth. I guess there's a train station in Tamworth. You could also get the train all the way into Birmingham and then come back out again. It takes more than an hour. Ultimately, a very inefficient way to travel. Which, of course, means that the only sensible solution is we need to move house. We need to get a little bit close to the football club. We need to go to a non-specific mortgage calculator which does leave us in something as a pickle because, as you can see, based on the really, really tiny starting salary, I think this is the lowest starting salary I've ever had in a non to legend, but based on that salary, they can't offer me any mortgage at all. I don't think we've ever quite been in this situation before. We can't buy a house, but we also can't commute. So we're going to need to get a little bit creative. We've zoomed in on Tamworth on the map. We can even have a little look at the ground. I am going to be going to a match this Saturday. So if you are in the Tamworth area, you want to come down to the match. I am going to the match on Saturday. So we'll have a, a proper scouting mission then. Um, but this is what the outside of the Tamworth ground looks like. I think there's a chance this is just an MOT centre, but I think in tiny letters it does say welcome to the CR MOT centre. And I think those words are community stadium. I think this is a football stadium. It definitely has floodlights and just there behind this little barrier, I presumably to stop people breaking in, you can just about see the Tamworth FC Ub shop. I assume is a club shop, which hopefully means I can buy a shirt because I tried to buy a shirt and their website and their website invites you to email them. There is not a there is not an online shop at Tamworth FC, but I am going to be making a beeline for that porter cabin on Saturday. But that's not the reason we've zoomed in. The reason we've zoomed in is because we need to find a, some, a, some kind of place to live. We'd, I mean, there's a field here which I guess has potential. We could get a boat. There's a whole lake there that we could put a boat on, potentially stay in a boat. How much does a boat cost? Boat, tent, caravan. But I think the most sensible solution, and it is all thanks to the, the wonderful people who take care of all of the Tamworth leisure and fun facilities. Um, as you can see, there's a Holiday Inn Express. A Holiday Inn Express, which for some reason has a Gruffalo. You can't quite see him. There you go. You can say, I don't know who that lad is. That's a Gruffalo, though. It's a Holiday Inn with a Gruffalo. It looks like, I mean, the rooms look like they're absolutely riddled with chairs. I think that's the breakfast bar. It all looks very fancy. I know what you're thinking, Kev. If you can't afford to buy a house, how on earth are you going to afford to stay in a Holiday Inn? Don't worry. You might have noticed in between the Holiday Inn and the football club, there's a snow dome. And the snow dome currently has vacancies for ski and snowboard instructors. If you watch my other channel, which you should, you'll know earlier this year, I became something of an expert at skiing and snowboarding. I think I could do this job. I'm so confident I can do this job, in fact, that I made contact with the snow dome of snow, ice and leisure in Tamworth and the Holiday Inn. And we've set up an arrangement where Monday to Friday, 
I'm going to work as a ski and snowboard instructor in exchange for free lodgings in the Holiday Inn. And then at weekends and evenings, I'm allowed to go and take training, go to the football matches, maybe have an occasional FA Cup match. It's win-win for everybody, a massive incentive for me to get out there and try and have some success on the pitch with Tamworth as soon as possible. Maybe, you know, win a full-time contract and be able to buy a house. But for now... I'm a ski instructor. So now at least I know where I'm going to be living and how I'm going to be occupying my days. Let's have a little look around the club, get our feet under the table, see what's what. We've got nearly 5,000 social media followers and 120 um, season ticket holders, which is jolly nice. We're just going to agree to all that. I mean, I am completely inexperienced, know nothing. People always ask um, about how I set up my manager profile. Um, I've just matched myself up to the reputation of the club that I'm managing. So that starts me off with a national B licence and Sunday league footballer experience. And that is my starting manager profile. That man is in no position to negotiate any kind of objective so far. What I am going to do straight away, first order of business, can I go on a coaching please, co course, please, Blob? <laughs> oh, God. I've just said police and then called the man Blob. I don't think I'm going to be getting the coaching course. Um, contracts, we've got a lot of players whose contracts are up for renewal. I mean, it's non-league. As far as I'm concerned, nobody should be on longer than a one-year contract. Nobody is. So the entire squad is out of contract at the end of the season, which is exactly how I like it at this level because it allows us to figure out what's what, have fairly high turnover of players and, you know, build a squad that can get us a promotion, which is definitely the plan. I'm not going to create a tactic now because I haven't even looked at the team. Pre-season preparation, all that kind of stuff. Right, let's look at what we've got. Let's work out who's who and what's what. How are we doing for money? So we've got 20 grand in the bank. No wonder they're not paying me anything. Goodness me. I'd like more than that as my salary, please, Bob. I almost did peas blob again. Bob, you're going to have to change your name. I'm going to get myself into all kinds of trouble because I can't get my words out. Our, we have a zero transfer budget. Our wage budget is 3,754 and we're already spending all of it. Every last penny is currently being spent. So I guess we're not going to be bringing anybody... I mean, look at the amount of money Bob's expected to make. The man could sling a few quid my way. There's zero debt involved in the club, not much in the way of sponsorship, but... Still, I feel like you could maybe give me a little bit more over here because at the moment that means absolutely no transfers unless we get some people out of the door first. Potentially, I mean, I'm looking straight away and seeing we've got three players on non-contracts. So they do actually allocate to the wage budget so we could potentially bin those off just to give us a little bit of wiggle room to play with. But we don't know how they fare against the rest of the players yet. Have we got a youth team? We don't have a youth team. We've got these two guys who, I mean, again, he's on a non-contract. He's going to be gone straight away with one and a half stars of ability. He's done. We need to free up some money to do something. But let's let's work out what we've got. If we sort these guys by ability, let's see who our best players are. So best players, top three, the three players who have got four stars of current ability, are a left winger, a right winger, and a central midfielder, which, I mean, can you... So actually... He's an attacking midfielder, not a central midfielder. So straight away, I mean, Bob was onto something when he wanted a 4-2-3-1 because we've got somebody to play on the left of an attacking midfield three, someone to play in the middle of one, someone to pay, play on the right of one. In fact, um, Kyle Finn can actually play anywhere across the attacking midfield three or on the right-hand side of midfield as well. He's pretty useful. Ten goals last season from midfield. That looks like he might be uh, a bit of a superstar for us. This guy... Um, wasn't quite. I mean, in fact, in fact, he's a new signing this summer, and then he's a new signing as well. So it looks like we're building towards a four-two-three-one. Our striker is our fourth best play, best player, Dan Creaney, who got thirty-four goals last year in the Southern Premier Central. This man is a legitimate hero. Hopefully, he can step step up and get that kind of goal return as well in the National League. That is. Awesome stuff. And then, I mean, as if to really push me towards the new style 4-2-3-1 that has the, uh, has the defensive midfielders in as well, our next best player is a defensive midfielder who wants to be a ball-winning midfielder, who, again, is another player new to Tamworth this season. What I'm not seeing anywhere, because then we go for more wingers again, what I'm not seeing much of is defenders. I feel like the defence might be an area that needs strengthening a little bit. Let's just get a 4-2-3-1 in for now, just so we can use the squad planner. So if we go to 
two three one dm am wide so that will then give us access to the squad planner have we gotten we have gotten us because i mean we've got some staff it's not great staff we have no recruitment staff or medical staff at all so that's probably something to deal with it appears that we've only got one goalkeeper hang on there was a there was a kid down in the there was a kid in the under some things dev center under 21s I mean, is he so bad? I mean, he's out of contract. We're, so we need another... We've got one goal kit. We've definitely have to do some stuff here because we can't go into the season. But, I mean, obviously, this is my first time playing the full version of FM24. So there's a chance this has changed since the beta. But certainly during the beta, during early access, goalkeeper injuries were rife. We cannot go into a season with just one goalkeeper. That's madness. We also only have one left back, Callum Cockrell Mollett. Um, who is, I mean, he is an out-and-out -out left back, but he is one of the out-of-contract boys and is attracting interest from some of our divisional rivals. So potentially going to need someone in at left back as well. We have got three right backs, but two of them are also in the number of our four centre backs. So we've got a little bit more cover in those positions than four DMs. Four attacking midfielders, plenty of wingers, plenty of strikers. So it is a very attack-heavy squad. Although, having said that, once you get below the main strikers, quality does seem to drop off fairly deeply. Dan, why is Creeny behind? Is it because of the position we've got? If we change that to target man, which I think was what Creeny's position was, I imagine, yeah, he moves back to the top of the tree there. So it looks like we need to be playing. I've have a, have, Can you do a 4-2-3-1 with a target, man? I guess you can. It's effectively a 4-4-2, just with a fancy modern shape, because you've got the wingers getting the crosses into the big guy. Is he a big guy? He's six foot two. I'm six foot two. That makes him a big guy. Um, and then you have the little guy in there, basically your second striker, um, but playing a little bit more withdrawn so he links up, drops deeper with the midfield a little bit better. Then you have these two protecting the back four and I guess you have the fullbacks push on a little bit. Again, looking to hit crosses into the big guy. It's very one-dimensional, but will hopefully get the job done for us. The media are expecting a 13th place finish. It said 18th on the screen before, but they're looking at a 13th place finish, which should, I mean, should, you would think should be achievable how far down do we have to scroll to find our best player on here um there you go so it is the attacking midfielder um shikuna i think is how you would say that um who will play in behind the striker okay there is the makings of a squad here but we are gonna have to bring in some depth we've only got what is this 20 players plus the two i mean why are we messing around having them in an under? Do we even have an under-21 team? Do they even have fixtures? Why are they down there? Just get them into the first team squad. Deal with them accordingly. So you two move up to the senior squad. We have a squad of 22 players. That's all we have at the entire club. There's no youth team, I don't think. There's no youth team at all. Can I just point out, um, where was it? Somewhere on here. Someone. Was it the supporters? Would like me to develop players using the club's youth system? Time with fans. How? Just how? 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 How am I supposed to do that? That's absurd. But uh, yeah, there is definitely some wheel of dealing to be done. And I think we don't, we're not even necessarily going to look at the quality of these players. More the case of we need to get rid of players to generate some wiggle room for ourselves. So someone like Alex Jones looks like a decent option as a backup option to Creaney. But we've already got Creaney as a starter and we've got other strikers. So it's probably, I mean, we could have Ty Deacon as our backup to Creaney. We don't, if we're playing one striker, we don't need two backups. When we don't have a backup left back, we don't have a backup goalkeeper. So we are going to have to let some players go so that we can bring some players in. We're also going to have to, before we can do any of that, hire a recruitment team because, of course, as you all know, in non league to Legend, we can only sign players that our scouts find. And at the moment, we don't have any scouts. And not only that, we can only hire staff that appear via adverts. So we really need to... It's going to be a slow summer. When's the first day of the season? Um, give, me, give me the schedule. First day of the season is 
just over a month away. We're going to take at least a couple of weeks to hire some staff, and then they've got to start doing some scouting. I don't know how much we'll have changed by the time we play Scunthorpe on the first day of the season. And by the way, if you're thinking, Scunthorpe, that's a name that sounds familiar. That's because you just saw them as odds-on favourite for the league. So our toughest game of the entire season is coming up first. <laughs> and... uh this squad's not ready. This is going to be uh, this is going to be an interesting challenge. And of course, as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see how the interesting challenge turns out, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video because if we get to 5000 likes on this video before 9 p.m. tonight, I will upload episode 2 tonight and episode two will be me showing you the transfers i've managed to do introducing you to the new staff and of course playing that first game of the season against scunthorpe we've got it all coming up later on this evening as long as you leave a thumbs up on the video but that's it for your first episode we have to keep it fairly brief to get the episode out in time because football manager in their eternal wisdom decided to release the game at four o'clock my usual release time but Hopefully that's given you a little bit of a sampler, a little bit of a taste to wet the whistle and show you what's to come in non to Legend this year. I'm mega, mega excited. Hopefully you are too. If you are, leave the thumbs up. We've been talking about all the way through. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. You're not going to want to miss part two, which should be out later on today. I need to now go and make that. Thank you very much for watching. Toodle I'm still giddy. I need to calm down. Thanks for watching, folks. See you, hopefully, in a couple of hours.